Let's have a go at making a Ghostbusters cake. So for this one, I'm going to create myself a template first. And because it's for the Frozen Empire, I think we'll add those little icicles so it looks like it's frosted over. And I'm going to make them out of some isolate. So I am going to need a heat proof mat. So this one is, is um, well, it's a heat proof mat. So it can withstand quite hot temperatures because the isomalt is going to get really hot. Now, I couldn't see my other template underneath, so I've reprinted off a picture from the internet. And I just need a bowl to melt it in. So it looks like this one is kind of set, but it looks like this. So they're more like granules before I've kind of cooked it in the microwave. And you see it does get little hair bubbles and things in, but I think that's okay for, for this. Let's remelt that old piece that I've got as well. So you have to melt it a bit at a time until it does bubble and fully melts. Now, I'm not much of an expert at all when it comes to isomalt. Um, so it's it's really just a bit of a playing around with it for me for this, but you know, I think it works okay for what we needed it for. So I'm just spreading it out on the map and I'm trying to kind of follow the lines of the icicles on the Ghostbusters logo underneath. So the advantage of this map is that I can see through it, which helped me massively on this one. Now it's fairly cold in my house and this set pretty quick. Just be careful not to touch it with your hands when it is hot because it will burn. So we've put that to one side and while that's setting, I am gonna work on the ghost. Does the ghost on this cake have a name? I don't know. I should not, I feel like I've watched that many Ghostbusters films and I don't know if the white ghost in the logo has a name or not. But we're gonna make him out of some white fondant. Now I'll put details below the video to all the products and everything that I've used with links to how you find them as well. So I've kneaded the fondant, but I want it to dry pretty firm. So I'm gonna add a bit of CMC to it. CMC is something that just hardens the fondant. It, it makes it a little bit firmer when it sets. You can use CMC or Tylos powder. They both kind of do the same thing. And you'll find that it kind of, when you're mixing it in, can you see it kind of looks a bit flaky and funny at first, but keep mixing it in, it will go in, it'll be fine. Then I'm just gonna use some corn flour just to dust my work surface. This just stops the fondant from sticking to whatever I'm rolling it onto. I'm just using a craft mat to roll it onto one here though. So I'm gonna roll it out big enough to use that original template. And then I'm gonna use a Dresden tool. You can get metal or plastic ones, but the metal one's a little bit sharper. So it might press in a little bit better through my template for this one. And I just need the outline of the ghost really for this. So I'm pressing on pretty firmly, even marking on where the mouth and eyes go. And you should be able to see when I lift the template off that I've got a bit of an indentation. I'm just going to press a little bit deeper now as well. You'll see where, where I press a bit hard, it kind of pushed some of the pencil almost through onto this. Now, pencil isn't toxic. It's a non-toxic thing. I'm not too worried about it on this cake, so it's fine for this. Also, my cake doesn't really go to anyone. Well, actually, sometimes I give it to the neighbours to eat, but there we go. So, so I'm just going to give that 10 minutes to firm up while I work on creating the red part of the Ghostbusters logo. So I'm just looking for different circles in different sizes that I think will help me with this one. Cause if I've got a circle to draw around, that's gonna make it a bit easier than me just using the template on its own. All of the template will work too. So I'm using red fondant for this one. Again, I did mix a tiny bit of CMC and Tylos into it. Or CMC or Tylos, I didn't put both in. Okay, I'm using those circles to draw around for a rough template and then putting that diagonal line across the middle and then I'm going to cut this out. If your fondant is stretching when you're cutting it, just give it like five, 10 minutes to firm up a little bit, then you, you should be able to cut through it much easier. So I've tried to roll this bit thinner than the white of the ghost so that the ghost looks like it sticks out a bit more than this red bit. And then I'm just going to check it fits and I'm going to place it onto the white and mark where that diagonal goes so we can cut that ghost in half. And then we're gonna cut all the way around the edge with a craft knife. Now I did leave it quite thick, the fondant for this ghost. I could have maybe gone a little bit thinner, but I wanted it to look like it was quite 3D. So I'm just checking that it fits into this red bit here. Now I've not stuck it in place or anything. It is just separate pieces. I just wanted to check it fit in. Just rubbing down any bits that stick out a bit too much with my finger. Then I just need to do the same, cut out the other side. Again, rubbing down the sharp edges with my finger because I want everything to look a bit rounded on it. Rounded and plump looking. Now because it's quite thick, it is gonna be quite heavy when we do attach it to our cake. So I am gonna have to kind of watch out for that and really make sure I stick it with something that holds firm to the cake later on. 
Okay, so let's check if that one fits. I think that does. I'm fairly happy with that. The edges want to kind of bend over the edge of uh, the, the red. So like the fingers and the top of his head. So I've just propped some fondant under there. Just hold it in place while it's firming up. I'll remove those later. And I'm going to put all that to one side. And in the meantime, I want to work on some slime to go in the middle of this cake. Now I'd like some green slime. And for that, I am going to actually make some caramel. So I looked up quite a few different recipes um, and videos on YouTube for how to make the caramel and it was cream with um, vanilla. Now I'm going to let you guys just Google one because it didn't actually work out very well for me. <laughs> so it was boiling the sugar is supposed to not like crystallize which is exactly what mine did do even though I thought I followed all instructions of how to not let that happen. Mine still crystallized. Um, I kind of picked bits out and then I just dyed it a green colour with some food colouring and it looked okay. I'm not sure I cooked it quite long enough, but it looks the part and do you know what? It didn't taste bad at all. It just tasted really sweet to be honest. Okay, so I feel like we've got ghosts on the front and I don't always do a back to these cakes that are kind of flat on the front and back, but I feel like we should have. So I drew out a back for the ghost. I'm just doing exactly the same as we did on the front where I cut it out. And then we also need the same red disc again. Uh, what's it called where it's a, like a disc where it's saying like something's not allowed. It's, I forget the name of it. But yeah, this is just going to go on here. And instead of cutting across the diagonal bit on the white, we're leaving that because he's sitting over the top of it from this angle. So let's bring back in the other one. And let's just add some outlines and a few details. There's not a huge amount to add to this one, but I'm just going to do it in the edible pens. So when I say edible pen, I do mean edible ink pen. And now a few people have commented asking if you can eat the whole pen. Um, no, it's just the ink inside it that is edible, guys. And of course, you can use food coloring in a paintbrush instead. You don't have to use the pens. And I'm just kind of creating a thick outline around the edge of him. I was tempted to put the outline on in black fondant and sort of roll a thin rope edge to go all the way around the edge and I thought this might be quicker. I'm not entirely sure it was quicker but it worked out okay, it looked okay. I like using the pens so it worked fine for me. Okay so the back, so exactly the same on the back as the front. The lines were pretty thick and I had to kind of try and colour in the cut edge as well. Then I wanted to add a bit of shading so I'm going to take it apart for this and I'm just going to darken the red. Now we are going to cover some of this with icicles later, but I still thought it would be nice to have a bit of shading on there so it wasn't too flat in color. So I've used a bit of black and red edible dusts, just brushed on dry, trying to concentrate more on one side than the other. And the darker you want to go, just the more black you can add. So there we go. It's not fully set, it's still a little bit soft. So I'll put that back down. Then we're going to do a similar thing with the ghost himself, but we're going to just use the black, no, not red on him. Anywhere that looks like it should be shaded or under shadow, we're going to go a little bit darker. And exactly the same on the back as well. I did rush the back a bit more compared to the front. I wish I had spent longer on that back. Next, I'm going to half my cake. I did buy the cake. Those of you that watch my videos regularly will know I often buy the cakes. So I'll put below where I got it from. Well, I got it from Sweet Success, but I'll put a link below. And what I'm going to do is add a thin layer of ganache to each side of the cake. Just a thin layer, the cut side. And I'm also going to add a layer of buttercream. Now, in fact, no, I added a layer of buttercream to one side and then a ganache to the other. I'm watching it so I should know what I'm doing and yet I still forget. Now, this is because when I put the green caramel sauce in, I want to look like slime. It will just soak into the cake sponge if there's not something in between it and the cake sponge. So the ganache was worked quite well for this. Now it also will squeeze out the sides as well, so I'm going to have to pipe a ganache down around the edge. So I'm just using a piping bag and we're just going all the way around the edge of the cake. I'm going to go over with a second layer as well so I can get a fairly thick layer of caramel or green slime in the middle of that. You just have to be really careful that there's no gaps, otherwise this slime will just ooze straight out the edge. I'm really pleased with the green slime. I think it's quite effective. I'm not sure who's going to want to eat it, but it actually tasted okay. So I've sandwiched my pieces of cake together. Now that slime is in the middle of caramel sauce. I am just putting the extra ganache around the edge there just to make sure that it is definitely kept inside the cake. It's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm also going to ganache the top as well. I overheated the ganache a little bit so you can see it's quite runny. And I need to turn it over and do the other side. So I'm just going to put a layer of greaseproof paper on there. Let's put a cake board on and just 
turn it over. My camera was a bit in the way of me turning it over. And I just need to do the same on the other side of my cake now. You can definitely see here that I overheated the ganache by how runny it is. Uh, it was quite cold in here, so it did start firming up quite quickly. It just looked a bit messy in the process while it was a bit soft. So I scraped over this, trying to smooth the edges and the top. I gave it a couple of layers and then once it was set, we peel off that back bit. Now, I just need to fill in little gaps and holes that I had on there, re smoothing it again. It's quite a long process sometimes, especially when like the first layer or two, I don't get it overly neat. Then I'm gonna put some piping gel just around this edge here and I'm gonna stick on that red sign. The sign that I don't know what it's called. Let me know in the comments below what this sign is called because I feel like I should know from driving the name of it but I don't. You'll notice as well I did add some black edible powder in there because there's going to be some gaps and I forgot the white ganache would show through so I've just added some black powder on there. So let's put our ghost in there. The ghost whose name I also don't know. Piping gel is quite sticky as well guys it's obviously an edible thing it's, it's a bit like glucose I think but yeah it's it's very sticky so that's going to help it stay in place. And then I'm just going to use more of the red edible powder this time I mixed it with clear alcohol to create a paint and went around the edges and then all that was left to do on the front was to add my little icicles so they are set so i just peeled them off that mat that i had and i'm trying to get them all to stick in the same direction sometimes they kind of frost over a little bit as well now you can glaze isomalt so it stays nice and shiny and then if you don't I don't know if it depends how humid it is. I don't know a lot about isomalt, like I say, but they can kind of, yeah, go a bit matte. I actually wanted them to go matte for this and typically they didn't when I wanted them to. When I had a practice at making them, they went matte. Okay, so I think there's about enough of those on there now. Yeah, I like this effect. I think it's, it's quite good. And the isomalt just tastes sweet. I think isomalt is sugar-free. I maybe will have to check that, but I think it is, but it still tastes nice and sweet. Now, because it's a round cake, you can either ganache it at the bottom when we lift it up like this, or you can just add a wedge of black fondant in either side to stop it kind of rolling around anywhere. Then I want to add the back piece on there as well. Now, the back piece was a little bit harder to add because the front piece, I could put it on while the cake was on its side or laying down, I should say, so it didn't slide off straight away. The back piece I had to add while it was stood up and it did want to slide down a little bit. So I just painted around the edges there and there it is, all finished, the front and back. So let's cut into this and see if our green slime oozes out or if it's absorbed into my sponge anywhere. There it is and the slime has oozed out just like I wanted. Although it's probably all going to come out. So by the time I cut a piece for anyone, there's going to be none of that slime left in there. But it looks good. And there we have it, the Ghostbusters cake. Let me know, guys, if you enjoyed this one and what other videos you'd like to see me make. And let me know if you've seen the film. I haven't been to watch it yet. As of making this, it's not out. It's out tomorrow. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos for more. And I will get the next one up very soon.